Hello and welcome to another video on this weird and wonderful AI channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through how you can run the AI toolkit by Ostris, but particularly using this new AI toolkit version. And this video will focus on uh, setting this up on RunPod again. Um, I guess more and more these new models are much bigger in size, so you may not have enough RAM to do the training. Um, I myself have an RTX 4080, which has got 16 GB video RAM. However, that's not sufficient to train any of the newer models. So I use uh, RunPod, which is cheap and effective way of installing and doing my training and paying for what I use. So I don't need to invest thousands of dollars buying the latest GPU. And then in a few months, it may be out of date. So let's get started. Um, the link to this Git repository will be in the description, but essentially we're first starting in RunPod. So RunPod is a cloud environment where you can deploy on demand different GPUs uh, with different size storage. So we'll start by clicking on deploy here. We're going to choose a GPU. So for the purpose of this training, let's just go with the 3090 here. Uh, as you can see, it's fairly cheap, only 43 cents an hour. So let's use that. Uh, the one thing we want to do is use this particular template, run pod PyTorch 2.4. If you don't have that, you can click on change and then you can search for it here. And this is going to show up here. So you can click on that, use that. The next thing we want to do is edit the template. So we want to add a port here, which is the port that this UI will run on. And that's uh, listed here, 8675. So what we're going to do is put a comma there, 8675 is another port that we want to access on this run pod. And for this training, I would typically start with like 100 GB on the container and maybe just 30 GB or 20 will be enough. Actually, let's just go with, uh, no, let's just stick with 30. That's fine. That's what I use typically. So why change? Uh, so that's all we need to do. Set overrides here. And it's going to start the Jupyter Notebook as soon as we launch. So we're ready to go. Let's fire this baby up. The beauty with these uh, standard run pod templates is that they're very fast to build. So within no time, we'll be up and running. So I've got two here, so don't be confused. This is the one we are launching and it's, you can see it's starting to create the volumes and start up the container. So it will take a few seconds and here we will click on connect when it's ready to connect, which will launch the Jupyter Lab. Here we go. Almost there. I usually give it another five seconds. So in the meantime, I'm going to tell you what else we need. We need to install Node.js, which is one of the requirements here that uh, you need to install in order to run this beautiful, neat uh, web UI, the toolkit UI. So we'll walk through these and I'll take you through that entire process. Let's connect. OK, so it's saying not ready, which means it's still just booting up, catching its breath. So let's give it a second. Oh, there you go. Just got ready. So that application is launching and ready to go. This has not started because we haven't configured or installed anything. So that's normal, not to be concerned. This one is the one we're going to go into and start our installation. With the installation, let's just let the notebook launch. And the first steps we need to do is copy this entire content. At the time of the recording of this video, I do notice there's a typo here, which let's just I mean, there's a typo here that should not be there. It should just be source space VANV slash bin slash activate. So what I would do is copy this and I would open the terminal here. At the same time, I'm just going to open a text file here so we can edit this. So I'll just paste that there and I'm just going to fix up this edit. And I don't need this comment line as well. So I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to go back and just copy this entire text again. Right. 
So here we go. We're in the workspace and I'm just going to hit paste. The one thing I'm going to do is I like to work in the dark environment. So I'm going to change that. And that's probably easier on your eyes as well. There we go. Paste the command here. And doesn't matter if you see these carriage returns and so forth. Just hit enter. The terminal is smart enough. It's going to go through all these commands one by one. This will take maybe five, 10 minutes. So I will pause and speed up the video. So we will return in a few seconds when all of this installation has happened. All right, there we go. The install is finished and it took about 15 minutes, I think, to install all of that. Um, now we're just going to leave this alone. We're going to open up a new terminal window. Here we go. I'm going to go to the Node.js download page and I'm going to copy this to clipboard and then basically come back and paste it in our text file. Just to the bottom of the file, paste. And we don't need necessarily all these commented bits, so I'm going to trim those out and trim that out and this bit as well. Oops, too much. Just this line here. And all we need to do is run this to do the installation of uh, Node.js. Uh, so we'll go to this window here, paste that, hit enter, and that only takes a few seconds. Here we go. All right, now we're using this and that is correct. So you want to check the version. You can just type these commands here. So let's just grab these commands. Um, here the comment is useful because it tells you what it's expecting to see. So let's just paste that and enter and we should get the results that matches our expectations. So that is all. Now we need to go into the AI toolkit folder. So we'll change directory, um, AI toolkit, and then the UI folder, right? And then hit enter. Now we're in this directory. We have to just run this one command to do the build. That is the command, build and run. Go back here, paste, hit enter, and wait a couple of minutes. You'll see this will start doing the build and the install or start the interface. I am very new to Node.js, so please, uh, if you've got any questions, you can ask, but I may not be able to help. Uh, what I've figured out is these set of command lines are what you need exactly to run this UI successfully. And I've been able to run that multiple times on my run pod and train various different LoRa's. So what I can say for sure is these steps, if you follow them as per the video, you should not have any trouble uh, running this interface. In the meantime, what you want to do is get a set of images ready. Uh, so I, for example, I've got some images here that I have already captioned using my existing workflow. Um, that's in Comfy UI. So I use Florence 2 model to basically help create the captions. Um, you can use them as is. You can further fine tune those captions manually. But for the purpose of this illustration, I'm just going to use these as they are. We we'll just wait for this to finish doing its startup thing. And uh, we'll know in a few set, few minutes when it's done, because you will see a prompt coming up uh, where it will indicate that that interface is up and running. And then when we go back to our pod, this one that says not ready should show as ready like this. Here we go. It is finished and now the interface is up and running. So of course, as anything with RunPod, those interfaces are public. So be careful if you're going to share those links online, anyone may be able to use that interface. Uh, so that's up and running as we see. Let's go back here. And as I said before, the interface is up and running. So click that. And here we go. We're going to get this beautiful, well-crafted user interface that lets you set up your jobs, your data set, and train your LoRa's. Uh, if you're going to use uh, Flux LoRa, make sure you put in into the settings your Hugging Face token. So grab your Hugging Face token, paste it here, click on save, and that's saved on 
the in the settings now let's go back to the dashboard so you've got navigation menus on the left you can see the gpu you're using the temperature the fan speed the clock speed uh, how much power it's drawing and you can also see the GPU load and memory usage, which is quite cool Here it will shows active jobs at the moment. We have none uh, So in order to create the job, we need a data set. So we're going to start with our data set And I'm going to create a new data set um, I'm going to call it surreal film Okay um, Click create no images found so we're gonna go and add images there we go uh, it's a nice clean drag and drop interface so here are all my images I'm grabbing images and captions together otherwise you'll have to caption them manually so grab everything drag it over paste it here and let it do its thing here we go those are the images I've uploaded. Those are the captions that I've created. And this is going to be my trigger word. So I'm going to copy that trigger word. Um, and yeah, the data set is good to go. There's nothing more to do here. All the files, uh, images, and their text captions have been recognized and loaded. So yeah, we have our first data set. Let's go and create a job. And for the job, if you're going to train, you've got all these models that are currently supported. So let's say we're gonna use Flux. And let's just call this, yeah. Um, real, yeah. My trigger word goes here. We're saving the config at 250 steps. We're gonna save the LoRa file generated as well. We're gonna keep four copies of that. We've got 2000 steps, so four means it's going to delete some of the old ones as it gets past uh, the third and to the fourth and then the fifth. So I'm going to make this a uh, bigger number, something like 10, because I want to use all the files. All the settings here, I leave them as is. The data set that has been selected is already there. So if you have multiple data sets, you can also add an additional data set here in the config. Um, the cool thing here is you can choose different resolutions as well. So if you've got large high-res images and enough VRAM, you can probably go up to 1280 or even 1536. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to stick up to 1280. Uh, it is saying that it's going to generate a sample every 250 steps, which is fine. Coincides with every time it's going to save a file. Um, all the steps are fine. The seed I like to use is eight eight, so five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I do not walk seed, I want a seed fixed. And here are some of the default captions. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. So let's go to this one. You've got various different prompts, right? Um, so let's use this prompt here, for example. We're going to add our trigger word. You need to add those yourself, right? Uh, but I also want to see the caption without it. So I'm going to add a prompt and add it here. Um, I'm going to delete all these others. So I just want two. So I get a comparison of how these are training. Uh, so I'll have one with my prompt and the LoRa and one without it. See how that goes. I think that's the way to do it. But let's see. Um, I've never tried that comparison before, so that's the first time I'm trying that. Otherwise, you'll just put your trigger words here and have all the prompts that you want to sample with. So that is it, create job. So we just click on the play button here to get that job going. The first time it's gonna run, obviously with Flux, it's going to download the models, so it may take initial few seconds to get started, uh, but you'll see the commands popping up here very soon. Here we go, it's getting started. Running one job, and you'll see the console print out here with what it's doing next. There we go, it's going to download the necessary model files and then basically start the training process.
All right, here we go. It's starting. You can see that, uh, yeah, it's kind of getting started. It'll warm up and then it'll pick up speed as well. It won't take three hours. I know that for sure. Uh, it will take uh, about an hour and a half, maybe two, depending on the GPU. Um, here we're on step five of 2000. And yeah, I just, yeah, it'd be good if we didn't have to scroll here because I've got a pretty decent sized screen. However, I still need to scroll across. Maybe this is something the author can fix in future releases. But that's essentially it. Now your training has started and our initial two baseline samples would have been generated. And um, so we'll see the two different. Yeah, so this one is with our trigger word. Um, does something to the uh, yeah <laughs> kind of lens effect. But here it's not affected at all. But uh, yeah, so as new files get generated, sample files, you will be able to find them here. And uh, yeah, that's essentially it. Now we're going to let this run for a little bit and generate our sample files. All right, so let's have a look. The new sample file is generated because we've reached the first uh, 250 steps. So these are the two images, not much difference there but uh, obviously the learning rate is, is the slow and we need to go through those series of steps. Um, you can see the file is downloaded here and of course you can click on download to download this file. Um, and yeah, it's downloading the file now. And uh, all the other checkpoints that are generated will be available here. So if we go back to the dashboard, we see the overview, the job is running. Uh, we're using this GPU and we also can keep an eye on it here. We don't have to go into the details. That's it for this video. Hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, to get started with RunPod, uh, check out my affiliate link down the bottom. Uh, that does not cost you any more, but it lets the RunPod team know that I referred you to their service, which is a great service. I've been paying and using this service for last couple of years, and I really enjoy the flexibility of being able to choose a GPU on demand as and when I need it. For example, here you've got a pool of massive GPU capacity and pool of variety. I can see, wow, that's new. RTX 1590 has been added. Gonna have to try this one out next. Uh, so check out another video coming on this channel looking at the 5090. That's awesome.